Hi guys, happy Thursday. I received several messages this week related to frames of reference and particularly the difference between the ecology of human performance and the PEO model as well as the MOHO. Now I plan to get to these videos soon <laughs> but I won't be able to do them all in the time before you guys test next week and some of you the week after next week so I just wanted to make a quick video to go over them uh, broadly and conceptually in hopes that it will guide uh, your studying when you're going through all of these bullet items. With frames of reference, it's really important for you to learn them conceptually and not get caught up with uh, memorizing the assumptions, the main principles, because there's a lot of overlap. And if you try to memorize everything, they will all sound the same. So try to find the subtle clues and distinguishing figures or features, okay? Let's start with the ecology of human performance. I'm going to make a video on this tonight uh, because I've just had too many questions on this and I'm gonna make a video and I'll publish it tonight. But the ecology of human performance in the most simple terms is looking at how our context and our environment affects our performance, hence ecology of human performance. Ecology literally means interaction between organisms and the environment. In this case, interaction between human and their environment. Of, and then the rest of the name is human performance, right? So we're looking at how our uh, interaction with our context environment affects our performance. If there's one thing that you need to remember, remember that there is a heavy emphasis on the context with the EHP model because Winnie Dunn wanted to create a model that would help us understand the complexities of the context and how it influences our performance. So context, context, context. There are four constructs, the person, the task, the context, and the performance. The way that it works is the person, context, and the task will work together to create the performance, what the person wants to do, their occupational performance. And when those three interact, you get the performance. And there are five intervention approaches for the EHP model. That is establish and restore. This is looking specifically at their strengths and weaknesses and you are trying to restore and increase their skills or abilities. There is modify and adapt. That's the second intervention strategy. So you can modify and adapt the context as well as the task. Alter. And uh, this is different than modify and adapt, right? You're completely changing. So changing the environment altogether to find the most optimal context. The fourth one, prevent. Uh, this is not necessarily preventing um, or working on an identified deficit, there might not be a deficit, but it was when you anticipate a problem that could occur and you prevent it. Fifth, create. You are creating opportunities to enhance optimal performance and to increase adaptability and uh, complex performance. So five intervention strategies. PEO model does not necessarily have these very specific uh, intervention strategies. They uh, pretty much just, you know, the practitioner is free to choose uh, intervention strategies that may enhance the occupational performance. But the main difference for the PEO model is that it's looking at the fit of the person, environment, and the occupation. So instead of the EHP model, which was looking at the complexities of the context and how it affects the performance, PEO is looking at the optimal fit of all those three things person, environment, and occupation to create the performance, which is why it's in that circle. If you guys look at the PO model, it's three circles, and in between that optimal fit creates the performance, right? And so a disability can be seen not necessarily as the actual deficit, but when there is a uh, a mismatch of a fit between the person and the environment, that could be seen as a disability. So we're looking at the fit as a whole of all those three things in the PEO model. Moho is looking at the person. When you think moho, think motivation. 
motivation. Okay, so instead of looking and focusing very much on the environmental context or the optimal fit in the PEO, we are looking specifically at what motivates the person. So we're looking at their intrinsic desires. We're looking at their volition, their performance patterns. We're looking at the context. What drives that person almost at an innate level to engage in the occupation of their choice? So a lot of the assessments use for moho will be things like uh, volitional questionnaire, o-cares, uh, occupational, what, what's the other one? I, I can't remember it. Um, occupational self-assessment. So looking at the person and what drives that person to do the occupation is really at the heart of model of human occupation. Wow, I talk really fast. <laughs> Um, but I hope that makes sense. That's really sort of how I uh, broke down and synthesized these models. And then with that in mind, I want you to go back to your textbook and fill in the blanks and then learn the assumptions and principles. But really, we have to be able to talk about these frameworks. They have to be understood conceptually before you fill in the blank because what ends up happening is they all sound like task, person, occupation, task, person, occupation, and then they all merge together and then it'll drive you crazy okay all right that's it uh, I will post a video on the uh, EHP model later tonight so look out for that and I will talk to you guys later bye